वेलकम एवरी वन वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो फ्रॉम शोमोज बायोलॉजी एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट टी आई प्लाज्मिड एज अ वैक्टर वी बिन टॉकिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट वैक्टर्स फॉर क्लोनिंग एज वेल एज एक्सप्रेशन एंड टी आई प्लाज्मिड इज यूज एज अ वैक्टर विच यूटिलाइज प्लान सेल एज अ होस्ट सो इफ यू आर टारगेटिंग यू कैरियोटिक होस्ट आइर वी नीड टू यूज ईस्ट आर्टिफिशियल क्रोमोसोम एज अ वैक्टर इफ आवर होस्ट इज ईस्ट बट इफ आवर होस्ट इज मोर हायर यूकैरियोटिक ऑर्गेनिज्म दैट इज अ प्लान सेल in that case we need to use ti plasmid as a vector ti plasmid is naturally occurring plasmid in agrobacterium tumefaciens bacteria so naturally occurring plasmid this is not a hybrid vector this is a naturally occurring vector but there are some problem with this ti plasmid vector there are some good things advantages and some disadvantages so we'll get rid of the disadvantage and we can use the ti plasmid as a vector of our choice in order to deliver a gene of interest inside the target eukaryotic cell that is a uh, plant cells so this is how the ti plasmid looks like okay so like any other plasmid like any other vector this is also carrying origin of replication known as ori region or ori region and it also has this two important and unique sectors as well you can see that uh, there are this is naturally occurring ti plasmid okay so in naturally occurring plasmid we don't have those uh, original replication selectable marker and uh, all those other important components uh, promoter any other region of uh, of the uh, typical molecular cloning marker we don't have that what we have here only we have origin of replication and uh, normally in ti plasmid we have this region starting with the left left border sequence right border sequence and in between a region known as tdna region this tdna region is composed of a uh, dna segments which code for auxin cytokinin opine so this tdna region is composed of auxin synthesizing gene cytokinin synthesizing gene opine releasing gene so this auxin and cytokinin these are plant hormones and they are growth hormones plant growth hormones basically allow the cell to divide and grow cytokinin allows the cell to grow in size in number as well as auxin allows the cell to grow and divide while opine uh, release of opine is very important uh, this is a chemical messenger that helps Uh, for a crosstalk between the bacteria and the plant so basically what plant leguminous plants legumes okay leguminous plants and the bacteria that is agrobacterium tumefaciens uh, they have this crosstalk okay so the no opine that is synthesized by the bacteria uh, is suggesting that there are near their bacteria are present in the near vicinity and the plant can interact with the bacteria and bacteria plant interaction is established and at the end what it form is formation of what is known as crown gall a tumor in the root area of the plant known as crown gall formation but remember this t dna region is the most important part because this is a section with have left border right border auxin cytokinin opine is normally present which is functioning for the symbiotic relationship between agrobacterium tumefaciens and leguminous plants and we also have virulence region virulence region composed of genes and the factors known as vir genes there are vir a b c d e f there are different names of the vir proteins which will help to guide and cut this uh, t dna it can help to guide and cut this t dna fragment from the ti plasmid and can help in transferring the t dna region from the agrobacterium tumefaciens into uh, the plant cell and that is what the job of virulence gene is so basically virulence region or vir genes or vir gene products are needed for the gene delivery from of of this t dna region or, or or a part of the t dna region into the plant cell okay so what happens in normally uh, naturally as a because we call agrobacterium tumefaciens as a nature's genetic engineer because agrobacterium can easily transfer its t dna region utilizing the vir gene products so vir gene products synthesized this vir gene products will cut uh, the t dna from this left and right border and only the portion of the t dna will be transferred from the bacterial cell into the plant cell with the help of different vir regions some of the vir products and proteins will form the channel between the plant cell and bacteria cell through which the dna will pass so these things are quite easy apart from that there is another section in this plasmid known as opine catabolism plasmid because opines are released by the plants octopines no pines those are released by the plants and once those are released this bacteria can take those things and can utilize those 
so they utilize opine and opaline cata opine catabolism is very important for the bacteria so bacteria must have opine catabolism genes so this is the overall idea of a ti plasmid a natural ti plasmid but remember this ti plasmid is not ready to be considered as a molecular vector why it is not considered as a molecular cloning vector because it lacks selectable marker region it lacks multiple cloning site so we need to add those sequence so if we add new sequences we need to cut some of the existing sequence uh, in order to have a proper size of the vector maintained otherwise the vector will be unstable in the host cell so what i say is that this this ti plasmid why ti full form tumor inducing plasmid ti plasmid it's a double stranded circular dna plasmid we have just talked about the circular dna plasmid here which is double stranded in nature which is found in agrobacterium tumefaciens which is a gram negative soil bacteria host cells are plants and they form crown gall remember i told you that it will form crown gall or tumor in the root region and the size of this plasmid is near about 250 kilo base pair the size of the whole plasmid remember not the insert size the size of the plasmid is 250 kilo bases and different kinds of ti plasmid uh, are there for different genes they possess so they possess different kinds of opines for example leucinopine nopaline octopine they have this different genes present and based on that they have different naming and nomenclature system which is not that important what is important to understand is that this is a naturally occurring plasmid okay naturally occurring plasmid but we can tell that we cannot use this naturally occurring plasmid as a molecular cloning vector so we need to modify this so what are the modifications that we do what are the modifications that we perform in order to use this ti plasmid as a plasmid or vector for molecular cloning so this is the this is the situation okay this is a normal situation of a ti plasmid a normal ti plasmid natural ti plasmid and what we do is calling disarm ti plasmid formation we do disarming of ti plasmid see in this ti plasmid basically they have this auxin and cytokinin and once these hormones are released they allow the cell to divide in rapid rate that's why they induce the formation of tumor uh, in the root of the plants that's how the crown gall is formed that's the natural process of crown gall formation because these are tumor inducing or tumorogenic this portion of tdna region tumorogenic it has a tumorogenic property due to the release of auxin and cytokinin hormone so we don't need that we don't need tumorogenic property we don't need to grow a cell uh, that that the our uh, requirement in case of uh, molecular cloning is simply to use a vector as a gene delivery vehicle where we can attach our target dna and can deliver it to the host in this case the host is eukaryotic that is the plant cell fine but we need to deliver our target dna but we don't need auxin and cytokinin so what we can do is simply we can cut this ti this tdna out we can cut this tdna region and instead what we can do that portion of tdna region the whole portion once it's cleaved out the size of the plasmid will be small so now we can carry some extra dna the target dna remember so what we do is that this is the tdna region and tdna region is deleted so delete this tdna region instead we can attach our gene of interest or our target dna or dna of interest in this position and now if we replace this tdna with our target dna we know the virgin will work the same the virgin products will work the same because the left border and right border is kept as it is and what happens is that the virgin products will cleave it from left border and right border and whatever gene is present in the middle will be transferred from the bacterial cell into the plant cell via normal process of gene delivery like a ti uh, bacterial agrobacterium mediated gene delivery system same system will be used but in this case instead of moving tdna with auxin cytokinin it will move our target dna that's what we want okay and uh, rest of the other regions will remain like origin of replication will remain there and we add uh, this multiple cloning set somewhere in this in this tdna region portion we also add some selectable marker at some point so that we can screen and select uh, the recombinant plasmid compared to the other so these are the modifications that we do to the existing ti plasmid the natural ti plasmid the most important modification is the disarming okay this disarming disarming means basically we cleave out any tumorogenic property of the ti plasmid we cleave it out and instead we attach the target dna so that the virgin products will guide the target dna from the 
bacterial cell into the plant cell. That's how it is done. Rest of the process is very simple. And now regarding the TI plasmid, let's talk about some advantages and disadvantages. Finally, advantages and disadvantages. What are the advantages, disadvantages? The ad advantage of TI plasmid as a molecular vector is that, uh, that the, the process of gene delivery is well regulated and well known because it's a natural process. So it's a natural process. Let me write. It's a natural process. And as it's a natural process, this the trans transformation efficiency, the efficiency is very, very high. The efficiency is very, very high because there are specific gene products of virulence gene that guide the process of delivery of a target you know very high efficiency and uh, it's a natural process so lag is very low second thing a second advantage is the screening process is also also very easy in this case because uh, we can use you know obviously in this modified plasmid we also add uh, antibiotic resistance marker or we can also add any kind of metabolite marker and there are multiple markers so why the screening is easy because we have multiple multiple markers multiple type of markers not only antibiotic resistance marker we have uh, metabolic uh, metabolism markers as well so there are positive regulation positive markers negative markers all these kind of markers are available for screening so screening process becomes easy and third is that uh, in this case the plasmid either we can use single plasmid or you can use multiple or two plasmids there. So binary vectors can also be used in case of TI plasmid mediated gene delivery. Binary vector that will even increase further. The it will increase the efficiency of transformation even further. Now, uh, what are the what are the disadvantages? The disadvantage in case of this is that. Uh, we need to artificially design and modify the tDNA plasmid. Basically, the existing tDNA plasmid will not work. And as I mentioned that if the target DNA uh, is huge and in that case, the transfer will take longer. And also as it's a, uh, this is a bacteria and it colonized with the plant cell, it can cause the crown gall, although we don't want that. So that's why cleave the uh, genes responsible for synthesizing auxin and cytokinin but still it can uh, produce that and one more disadvantage you can say is that the time duration that it takes place because the host cell is planned uh, the duration i can write it at disadvantage number one only the duration of this whole process is little lengthy than that of the other uh, molecular marker mediated gene delivery that is a plasmid phage bacteriophage or anything else so that is one uh, one drawback rest of uh, other than that rest of this are advantage of ti plasmid so basically in case of plants if you want to deliver the target dna inside a plant cell we can always use ti dna or ti plasmid basically to deliver the target dna inside the plant cell for these advantages so that's uh, kind of it about the TI DNA plasmid. I believe you have a clear idea about TI DNA plasmid. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more videos like that in future. And if you want to know more about the agrobacterium mediated gene delivery, basically in this video, we haven't discussed about how exactly the tDNA is delivered and all, which we'll discuss uh, in a separate video. We have already discussed in a separate video of agrobacterium mediated gene delivery or TI plasmid mediated gene delivery. You can watch that video later on.